What's up, everyone? It's two times. This is going to be a bit of a struggle. Uh, <laughs> how's it going? We are live for Thursday, March 18th, and I'm running the show tonight, so this is this is what you fucking get. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm here Not with uh, with John, Justin, and CJ, and we're just going to have a real chill podcast tonight, I think. We got a couple big topics. Um, hopefully, everyone's doing okay. How are you guys? Uh, fuck, man. It's been a fucking... It's been a it, it's it's been a couple of days, man. It's been a motherfucking I'm, couple of days. I'm glad I was actually able to be here this week. I have I haven't been able to be here because of work and thought that was going to continue this week, but was able to come in. So I'm excited about that. So I want to uh, I want to reassure everybody in chat real quick, um, just because I've been tweeting about it. Vicky is Vicky's okay. Uh, she's home. Um, she is currently asleep in bed. Um, you know, we still don't exactly know what happened, but we ruled out the most scary stuff. So that's good. Um, and, uh, I got a lot of messages of support, uh, for Vicky, uh, over the past 24 hours. And I really, really appreciate it, uh, from everybody. And I especially want to thank my, my family on the podcast here for being as supportive as they are. And they have, I mean, you guys are always supportive, but but I don't really, I don't really tell you guys that enough. Um, so I just want to let all of you know, both in our community and uh, my my family right here on the podcast, uh, how much I appreciate your presence uh, in my life. Yeah, I mean, I think the feelings mutual from all of us, buddy. We love you, and we love Vicky, and we just want uh, want you guys to be healthy and happy. So um, hopefully, she's on the mend, and hopefully, you guys are doing okay. I, right now, I'm just drinking, man. <laughs> Big mood. <laughs> Big mood. That's what I've been saying every day. I'm just drinking. Do I sound? I feel like I sound tired. Do I sound tired? <laughs> yeah. You, you sound a little. You sound a little beat today. <laughs> I think everyone. Dude, I, everyone seems to just sound a little more dead inside with every week that goes by. Yeah. This fucking year. Uh, yeah. One, one thing that one funny thing that Beta Meister in chat just pointed out that didn't occur to me is because of daylight savings time, we're actually an hour earlier in in some. Uh, regions that don't observe it. I oh, that's real- good. I didn't consider that's, that's just a North American thing, right? BST. Yeah, I yeah. guess it's, I don't it, know. It it's not a worldwide thing. No, daylight savings time. I know it's, it's not a worldwide thing. We shouldn't do it. It's not even like. Oh yeah, number, <laughs> hell yeah, number one in daylight savings time. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> we're back to back world war champs, and we're leading the world in daylight savings time. Yeah, Let's baby. Go. Let's Let's right, motherfucker. Up. So I I thought we'd lead this podcast off with one hour of uh Snyder Cut Justice League discussion. Um and just so kind of basically <laughs> No, I was joking. Ratio is is fucking like genius all right we it's, need to bring that back more we do not need to absolutely I, not. I feel like i I, I am literally surprised that cj just didn't immediately like wheel out a whiteboard with uh with uh snyder cut talking four by, on. Four, about the about the four no i, I didn't want to talk about Snyder. i didn't want to talk about the four by three aspect ratio which is currently what my camera is it's shot so at right fucking now it's weird like, like <laughs> it, it, it's because it's the full it's the full imax uh ratio I, it's like I completely get why he did it and why he doesn't want to lose any data in the frames by cropping it, but it because fucking of his artistic sucks. Vision. I'm sorry, it's, it's sucks. his artistic vision. It literally, you guys know, it starts with a "This is presented in four three to yes. maintain Zack Snyder's artistic yeah. vision, his right? Artistic like, vision. They have they have to warn. Vision. I don't warn Snyder fans who have never seen any other movies. Like, oh, this is how other movies look like, guys. You know, like this is something. This is what art looks like. Relax. We live in a, like, we live in a four <laughs> three society. It's like when Truly. it's like in in Last Jedi when there's a scene where the audio cuts out for artistic effects. Pe- like like movie theaters had to put up signs saying there is a scene that doesn't have sound, like because they got Sometimes. people complaining that the sound in the theater cut out. Right. Sometimes directors make choices. It's fine, guys. You'll, you'll be fine. <laughs> CJ just CJ just gave me a thought. Like instead of that, that instead of that 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 notice at the beginning of the film, it should have just said, "This is what art looks like, guys." <laughs> <Literally>. <laughs> Walk into the film. Watch another <laughs> fucking movie, guys. How's that? <laughs> oh god. <laughs> <laughs> oh right uh we we aren't actually gonna spend the whole podcast talking about the snyder cut because i don't i haven't been able to watch it yet i'm, gonna I'm watch going tomorrow. to watch it but i haven't I'm been able to watch it, it i'm gonna wait yeah, three watch months till it's available here uh in something other than 720p 
But we we are going to talk about video games, I think. Um, what did, are those? Do you, do we want to just say something you know mm, yeah. serious first, and then yeah. we're going to get into kind Please. of you know, chill ahead, fun man. show? So um, you know, the past um year especially, there has been a huge rise in violence against Asian Americans, the Pacific Islanders, um, in the U.S. A lot of it is due to the rhetoric around COVID nineteen. Um, but it's also been contributed to by tech industry um, and a lot of stuff in gaming as well. Um, and there was a a shooting in Atlanta that left um, six Asian women dead. Um, I think there was total eight total victims. Um, and we just want to say that um, we stand in solidarity with the Asian American Pacific Islander community. Um, I I've made a couple contributions myself to some. Uh, local programs that are trying to support those groups, but um, it's something that has been dramatically on the rise um, lately, and there's been a lot of unnerving things, and this is just it boiling over, and I, I'm I'm very afraid we're going to see more, but everyone at SDGC wants to voice our support for that community um, and let people know that that hate is not tolerated in our communities, um, and we are going to continue to push back against it. Um, I have uh, I've said it before, and Justin, that was very well said for one thing. Um, I'll I'll say it before, or I've said it before, and I'll say it again. Um, SDGC is a community that prides itself on inclusivity um, and positivity and progressive values. If if um, if you hold any sort of uh, prejudice or bigotry or any sort of rach or uh, racial hatred in your heart, this is not the place for you. This is not the podcast for you. This is not the community for you. Um, and if you fall under any one of those categories, go fuck yourself. You're not welcome here. Well said. I mean that. All right. So we do have video games to talk about, right, Jeff? We do. Yeah. We, we got, we got, yeah. God, I, I can hear how fucking tired I am in my own voice. Jesus. Apparently, are, are everyone we talk in what chat we've been... is very tired too. Yeah. We're going to start with what we've been playing, Justin. <laughs> okay, cool. Why don't, why don't cool. you lead us off, buddy? So I, um, I checked out the Ancient Gods Part 2 DLC for Doom Eternal today. Um, I have not finished it yet. I've only, I've only, I haven't even finished the first stage yet. But if you thought Ancient Gods Part 1 was hard, wait until you see the stuff they throw at you in Part 2. I haven't like, even finished the original game, Justin. I'll, I'll be, I'll be up front with you. Dude, uh, the DLCs pull zero punches. Um... Like you can tell that they had um they had like brainstorming sessions for like the new types of enemies and types of encounters to introduce in these DLCs that like most developers were like, no, we can't do that. And it's like they gleefully put them <laughs> into these. It's still very, very fun and very, very satisfying. Um and story wise, it really seems to be building up like to a huge finale. So I'm really excited to see where that goes and like because they've talked about this as you know the end of the doom eternal stuff but they've also mentioned that there is going to be more doom coming in the future even though this seems like it's setting up something very very final for the series so i'm Exclusive really excited xbox and pc yeah apparently um which is kind of a <laughs> bummer for me because i have every single doom on my playstation including you know the oh, vr games crazy. and yeah. stuff um <laughs> but you know. Just look at look at look at the newfound Xbox exclusivity as like a different, um, like an alternate reality, like an alternate dimension of Doom. I mean, so. I'm 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 probably gonna end up with an Xbox at some point this generation anyway, so it's not that big of a deal, um, for me. But it is kind of a bummer. Like for me, that's kind of a bummer for Doom because Doom's whole thing is it's it's gonna be on every single platform that can run it. Like Doom Eternal is on Switch. Um, like in the, in the, in the mid nineties, porting doom to something, especially like a console was always like a major, major thing. So like, that's just kind of a part of id's history that's going to be gone now. And that's, that's kind of a bummer for me more so than the actual, like, you know, business side of it, but that's another issue, but doom eternal DLC. Very good. Um, I'm really excited to see what it's building up to. Like I, I'm having a blast playing it. Like, so doom eternal was the game I played last it came out on my birthday last year um you know it was early in lockdown and stuff and playing that game was just such a great escape for me and let me you know i like 
there's nothing else that gets me kind of like in the zone like Doom Eternal does. Um, and, you know, I'm coming up on my second uh, <laughs> COVID birthday, uh, you know, in the next few days. And then this just came out. So, like, it's been nice to be able to kind of just relax and play some Doom again. I, I, I'm sorry. I, I, oh, I, real ahead. quick, I just yeah. want I, real quick, real quick. I just want to I want to point out the the interesting contradiction of of someone saying I just want to relax and play some Doom. <laughs> you know, I just want to relax. Listen, listen. It 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 blows off some steam. I I know I I know I know. I, it's just like I it, think of my I, I hear I just want to relax and play some Doom and think about myself screaming that, about Marauders it, and destroying Marauders are easy the, though. The, the weekend. Oh. Don't. The weekend it came out, the weekend it came out. Christine was like all into Animal Crossing, like it was like a godsend. And me, I'm there playing Doom, like it's therapy. It's it's amazing. It's, it's <laughs> it, I beat it's, it that weekend. It's funny Not, both of you guys like, say that it's, it's, because uh, I remember I was in a very bad state when that came out, and I bought Doom because I was super hyped for it. And I sat down and I was just like I was shaking just from like the pandemic and stuff like that. And I played like two levels, and I was just stressed beyond fucking belief. And I, so I was like, Man. and then I just picked up my Switch and played Animal Crossing, but Doom's yeah, a great yeah. game. I just, I wasn't, oh, it's, it's great. it wasn't yeah. what I needed at the time. That, I know plenty of people that, that bounced off Eternal, so it, you're not, you're not alone in that. But for me, like that game mm -hmm. just clicks. So CJ, what have you been playing, buddy? I, I know you said uh, you just deleted Black Ops in a fit of rage. What could fill that hole? Um. I'm um uh, nothing actually. I've been playing anything because I, I I everything I've been playing is for review. But I've I've got more library games. I've watched the Snyder more... Cut four times now, though. <laughs> I actually did. It's great. It's amazing. <laughs> it's, it's art. Yeah. That's like I called Scorsese. I called Scorsese up. I told him he's wrong about everything, and I threw wow. out a copy of, of Goodfellas on Blu-ray. Wow. Um, <laughs> how, did he, how, did, how, was how did he feel about that, CJ? Yeah, That's was, a... you know what he took my word for it. And wow. It was fine. Wow. His cameo and it was great. Anyway, I picked up from the library. Uh, new Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe on Switch. Oh, that's a good choice. Nice. Haven't, haven't, haven't played it. I love I, I I love 2D Mario. Also picked up Super Mario 3D World with Thousand. There, Mario. also a great game. I, nice. Yeah. I'm excited to jump into it. Yeah. But as far as what I've been doing, um, uh, I don't know why I locked myself to video games. I've been watching TV, um, a lot of TV, and recently I started a show called Vice Principals, which is on HBO. Um, it stars Danny McBride and, and Walton Goggins, and they play these two uh, vice principals. At this oh, that's school. a that's a hell of a pairing. Oh my god! Oh, I've heard pair. such good things about this show. Walton Goggins okay, so is so underrated. I love what well, I every other week I post a Walton Goggins appreciation thread on Twitter because I love that dude so much. But anyway, so it's about these two vice principals at this school, and I believe it's North or South Carolina, um, and their principal leaves to go tend to his like dying wife, and they're kind of vying for the same spot. They hate each other. The school hires someone else and then decide they're going to form an alliance to try to get her to quit and try to like rise to the top. It's incredibly mean spirited. It is a very dark show, but it's also one of the funniest and, and most beautiful character pieces I've seen. Cause Walton Goggins character is this sociopathic, like, like he'll get what he wants. He's one of the, you know, he'll smile, but he'll stab you in the back at the same yeah, time. Walton Goggins. That's every Walton Goggins character. I, I, he, no, he, it's great. Danny McBride. He, he's, he plays the straight man. Like he usually does the straight, but the straight man who doesn't understand what he's in. So he, he kind of questions everything. Um, It's a great show and it, it's really well shot. The soundtrack is incredible. It's a really great moody electronic music that wouldn't fit with the sitcom. It adds that tension. I, I recommend that. That's been my entire week. Just kind of like, um, what are they chopping away at it? It's two seasons long and eighteen episodes in total, so it's a really nice. I wouldn't say breezy because it's it's kind of heavy, but it's it's it, it you can get it done like in a week. Awesome, nice. That's awesome, dude. Is that all you've been watching? That's, yeah, yeah. The, and every time I'm working, I have Family Guy and The Simpsons on in the background because I'm a mess. <laughs> I thought you were gonna say. I thought you were gonna say Snyder Cut. Six times. Snyder, Snyder, Saturday, Saturday. Poor Christine's gonna Snyder, have to sit through four Snyder, hours. Snyder Day, <laughs> Saturday, is Snyder Day. Make, make sure you Hell make her yeah. rewatch the ultimate cut of Batman vs Superman as well. Which is I'm not gonna do that to her. <laughs> I'm not gonna do that to her. I'm not gonna do that to her. <laughs> CJ, I this. have to ask: Are you are you disappointed or upset that Joker doesn't actually say we live in a society? In I'm the disappointed. Film? Actually, I, I thought. Like I, I look, as soon as that trailer dropped, I knew that was just some fan servicey bit that they put together because they thought it was funny. Because I think, in all honesty. Zack Snyder and Jared Little thought they were being like clever and earnest that everyone 
thought that that line was like this mind blowing and smart thing to say that no, that they didn't they 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 probably have no idea. No, it's a fucking meme. <laughs> Everyone's just saying it ironically. I, there's probably going to be a joke. I mean, no, not a joke. Like a scene in the movie where like someone says. Oh, he's going to become the Joker. Yeah, I was just gonna say that. Like, I was, at with, some point, it would not surprise me, CJ. Like, if in the Batman, uh, you know, the Batman starring uh, Robert Pattinson that's coming out, <laughs> like at the the end of the movie, like the like like there's a post credit scene. We've got a guy who just like crawls out of the uh, out of the Ace Chemicals vat. <laughs> and he's like panting in front of the camera, and he looks up and he goes, "I'm gonna become the Joker," <laughs> and and, and okay. he's gonna and he's gonna cut. My other, my other theory, yeah, there's maybe some like orderly at Arkham looking over a file with like a letter J. That's all you can see, and they're like, "Yeah, oh, we gotta contain this man. He's gonna become the Joker." <laughs> and then, boom, it ends. Or, or, or they, they've mentioned that they might make a sequel to Joker, and I hope they just call it "Becoming the Joker." Becoming <laughs> like, <laughs> like actual title, like that would be on par with Venom Two being called "Let There Be Carnage." I just, I just, God. Like, I just want him to like walk into. Joker. I just want him to walk into like a DMV as like Dave or something like that, and have the lady say, "I liked you better. I liked your birth name better, Joker." No. <laughs> no. <laughs> what, they need, what they need to do, what they need to do, <laughs> Nolan for, fuming right now <laughs> for the second for the sequel to uh, to um to Joker. They need to give Arthur Fleck like uh, like a, a rival who also wants to become the Joker, and they need to call it "I'm going to become the Joker too." Like that's that's what they need to call that that's movie. Comma, comma, comma two. Comma two. Go. Hell, I'm going to become the yeah. Joker too. Right. Yep. That, I, I'm putting an end. Society, this society isn't big enough for both <laughs> of us. Okay. I'm putting an end to the Joker discourse, John. <laughs> There's only room for one of us in this society, <laughs> John. <laughs> John, what have you been playing? Save us. Um, okay. <laughs> this is going to come to a shock, uh, come as a shock to a lot of people. Is it Bravely Default 2? Oh, hold on to your fucking hats here. I've been playing Bra Bravely Default 2 and Final Fantasy 14. I, I know, Justin, I know. Oh, I thought John. I know. Uh, Reset the Final Fantasy Dark clock. Like, make up for me now. <laughs> I, I know. I know that's fucking with your head right now. Okay. Oh, but, wow. but, but relax. That's so like, out of your wheelhouse, John. I know. I know. Look, I'm look, I'm branching out and trying new things. You guys see all this uh all this Call of Duty and uh and Battlefield paraphernalia behind me. Um you know, <laughs> I'm I'm really, really stepping out of my comfort zone here. Uh but um, sorry, Blaine said in chat, Joaquin Phoenix stares into the camera and says, This morning I woke up and chose to become the Joker too. <laughs> I can't get that shit out of my head now, but um, no, no, I'm about 65 hours into Bravely Default 2. Um, I'm in the I'm in the the very ass end of the game, like, like basically grinding grinding to go fight the final. What boss. is the ass end um, of the game? The ass end of the game is opposite of the very uh, the mouth beginning of the game. Um, that's the best way I can I can possibly that's, describe that's it. That's a phrase no one has used. <laughs> I, I, until now, <laughs> until now on SDGC, Jesus. the mouth beginning of the game and the ass end of the game. Bravely sent to um, And the, the the best thing about that, oh no, the best bravely, thing about, bravely bravely default centipede. human centipede. The best thing about that is that this mouth and ass never meet. That's the best part about the mouth and the ass of the video. It's the best game. part of any game, man. Um, and <laughs> this is the best part of anything. Period. Yeah. Um, so essentially, I don't know where the fuck I was going with that. Um, no, I'm, I'm about 65 hours into Bravely Default 2, talking about you know I'm in as I said the ass end of the game. Um, I'm I'm probably I'll, I'll I'll have it finished before the weekend. Um, and honestly, I'm just uh, I'm grinding out as I was doing Final Fantasy 14 and getting ready for Monster Hunter Rise next Friday. Uh, which is oh, uh, but I did also briefly fire up and I'm gonna just kind of plow through it uh this weekend uh is um scott pilgrim versus the world which i'd never played before um and uh what a what, a, what dude, this game's got some great fucking pixel art holy shit it rule oh yeah it rules yeah that's you know that, that there's that... a there's a reason people have been demanding it come back in some way like the the pixel art and the music are so good the soundtrack yeah. absolutely kicks ass holy yeah. shit it's like my favorite part of the game that like, like it's the um, like I love side scrolling two D beat em ups because and, and you know and uh, Streets of Rage four is fantastic. If you if you never played uh, River City or uh, uh, River, River City Girls, that game fucking awesome. Yo, um, holy shit, River City Girls is great. Oh my god, one of the first yeah, reviews like yeah. that. Holy shit, 
Yeah, it's it's beautiful. The fucking dude, it's, it's CJ. You want to talk about music? Like the music in that fucking game, dude. Holy shit. The, um, there was a week like a, after I, I finished it, a straight week, I would drive to work blasting it, like the opening theme song and the mall theme song over and over. It's such a great. Oh, it's game. so good. It's oh, so fucking good. Um, so yeah, I'll I'll blast through that this weekend, and then uh, next Friday it's going to be all about uh, Monster Hunter Rise. Hmm. Have I been playing what anything? I... What have I been Jeff, playing? Jeff, have you have you been playing anything? <laughs> Jeff, tell us about your thoughts on the Snyder Cut. Um. No, I'm not gonna do that. We be flying John, uh, <laughs> flying Jeff in from Canada to watch it with me. In 4K. Yeah. And um, we're gonna it's like a book book club style. It, like, if I'm gonna, gonna fly gonna, during a pandemic and gorgeous, die, gorgeous it's not gonna be. Ratio. It's not gonna be for the Snyder Cut. I'll tell you that. Um, <laughs> although, I yeah, do, it's gonna be I for do, Godzilla versus Kong. I do have the Ultimate Cut of Watchmen on 4K on my shelf, and I will die on that hill. That that's a good movie. Um, mm. No, I've been playing. I'm kind of stuck. I feel like. I think I'm getting like really picky as I get older. So like every apparently there's games coming out, but I keep looking and I'm like, I feel like nothing has come out since the PS5 launch. Like I'm still chipping away at Demon Souls, but I, I've just been playing old stuff. I don't know like what that next um big game that's really gonna grab me is gonna be, but uh, I'm I'm still playing Demon Souls. Uh I, I mentioned this before. I'm like I'm too old and I'm too far out of shits to give to actually want to play this by myself. Um, but I'm playing with, with two of my good buddies from college, and we're just cruising through it. Um, my one did this super broken build with some sword. He just one hits every single boss, and it's fine. We we just shoot the shit while we go through it. Um, nice. But it, it's good. Like I'm, I haven't, I played it and beat it on PS3, but I'm getting a better appreciation for it this time, I think. And uh, yeah, I mean, I I can't say anything that hasn't been said. Blue Point knocked it out of the park. The, it's it's just interesting to go back and see how they built on and like improved a lot of things as the series went on. Uh, Cause I, a lot of times in the game, I can't tell if something is really clever design or just like a really uh, blatant glitch that everyone just exploited. Like so much of the game, uh, the, the way you can do certain things. or so there's a shortcut in one level where you have to like awkwardly roll across a gap and hit, get the hitbox on the ledge specifically. Right. And I'm like, Either they brilliantly designed this so you have almost no margin for error, or they had no idea you'd gonna be able to roll off here. So oh, it's the second one for sure, dude. It's yeah. it's from software. For sure it's the second <laughs> one. So uh um, like there yeah, pe people people look for uh, creative ways to break those games. Um like and, I'm killing the I dragons on the bridge uh, and with like three hundred arrows and I'm like, is yep, this really the only way to be beat their yep. dragons? Yep, that's that's a, it's like it, it's like in Dark Souls when you're in uh when you're in um the undead burg and you're underneath the bridge and you just shoot the dragon the fire drake's tail mm -hmm. until his tail falls off and he flies away. Like that's it, it takes like 300 fucking arrows, yeah. but it's you know it takes like an hour and that's by design yeah, and, is what you're saying. Yeah, and and he just sits there and he's like he's like whatever. He's like that's fine. You know, I'm just going <laughs> to sit here and roar and, like I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna actually like it, the whole time. You're like that dragon can literally just like snake his head down to the right and completely <laughs> incinerate me. But instead, he's like, Nah, man, it's good. I'm fine. It's all right. You so, can fucking fire arrows into my tail. Yeah, pretty much. Um, so yeah, I've been playing that, and then to kind of I guess uh, balance the uh, the anxiety of a Souls game, I'm just playing lots of Minecraft again. Um, I don't know. I, I don't care. Like people like Minecraft or they don't, but that's a super chill game. And um, it's got a ton of updates. I haven't played it probably in like eight years. I put in hundreds of hours uh, back on the uh, the late PS3 360 era. Um, and I don't know. It's, it's not for everyone, but I love uh, like you can play it lots of different ways. You can just focus on mining and collecting resources or you can like kind of come up with your own little projects. And I'm not even that creative, but I just kind of like I play with friends again, and we just kind of all find a little thing to work on, Aww. a little project that keeps me busy for a few hours, and uh, I can get wasted and play that game and like not really miss a beat. So it's uh, it's a it's the chill out game that I that I need right now. I will say I have to go on a little mini rant. Uh, there's oh two there's two versions of Minecraft. There's Java, which is exclusive to PC, and then there's the Bedrock Edition, which is like kind of their like universal cross play platform. Um, but we're playing on what's called Minecraft Realms. Basically, you pay Microsoft to have like hosted servers. Uh, but Realms like sucks ass. The all the settings and draw distance are like way way lower than they should be, and it's super laggy. And it's just weird to like be paying a monthly fee for the worst version of the game. 
And the other weird thing, which I didn't realize, is this game like never got any enhancements for either the Series X or the One X or anything. Like it's like the same base version that launched on the Xbox One in 2013 and the PS4. And like I don't know, that surprises me. This is it's been around for a long time, and Microsoft owns Mojang now. I'm just I'm shocked that like they haven't at least upped some of the settings because like. It's just it looks like Silent Hill when you're playing on the console versions. Like there's just <laughs> that draw distance fog is like so claustrophobic you can't even see uh like across the little islands. So I don't know. That's that's just weird that they haven't um upgraded their own first party game for, for their platforms yet. I don't know if that's coming or not. But uh Yeah. I, I assume nobody else wants to weigh in on Minecraft, so maybe we'll just call it there. <laughs> I've played I've played approximately two hours of Minecraft. I know with your son. Phone. I've never played it. No, it was actually just to just to just to asso- assuage my own curiosity uh, on whether or not I would like it. And after two hours, I was like, "Yeah, no, this is doing field cool. research." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, field research. That's you, you, field you played research. Minecraft Dungeons, though, right? You kind of dug that. I just wanted to, you know, what I, I I did like Minecraft Dungeons. I bounced off of it fairly quickly, simply because. Um, I like playing those style, like those kinds of games with friends, and there's no online multiplayer; it's only local co-op. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, that's right. Which really was a huge bummer. Um, but I just oh, really, yeah. And um, it, Minecraft, like, I went into it thinking I'm going to, I'm going to build a society and live. Fuck in that you. Society. Okay. All right. All right. Oh, all right. All right. Just, all right. It, it didn't work. Banning the word society from the podcast. <laughs> You get you get like two of those and that's it. Like no more. <laughs> it's too too early for the callback, John. No, you can't. Uh, all right, that, that would have been a great way to wrap the show. Now you can't do it. Thanks. Yeah. Now, now, it. now now you just made it illegal. <laughs> yeah, well, you know what? You know what? I'm I'm getting. Oh. Okay. <laughs> we're, what's our next topic? What's our next topic? Uh, so I guess our first major topic, um, I've got a game, I've got an article here from Games Industry Biz that I can read, but I don't know. Uh, so it's it's Sony acquiring the fighting game tournament Evo. So I don't know if uh, Finn's kind of Finn and Derek were kind of our fighting game community guys. Justin, I don't know. Do you have? Uh, I don't any... know jack shit. About All right, so we're just gonna games. go from the article. None of us are super <laughs> big into fighting games, uh, but this is a big deal. Um, so it says Sony Interactive Entertainment has acquired. The Evolution Championship Series, alongside a new esports company called RTS, uh, better known as Evo, the fighting game tournament is a major event in the calendar for fans of games like Smash Bros, Street Fighter, Tekken, and Mortal Kombat. Um, the next events are digital only and taking place this summer, I think in August. Um, Guilty Gear Strive, Mortal Kombat 11, Street Fighter 5, and Tekken 7. So basically, uh, I didn't know you could do this, but I, I guess Sony just bought the entire tournament or the the organization that that runs it. That's wild. Is there a dollar amount there, Jeff? Uh, they, they didn't give the price. They didn't give the price. Not in the article. It's my ticket, I guess. You know, I don't even follow fighting games, and I know this is a big fucking event. Um, so that's that's pretty well, big. I mean, last year they lost their the. I think it was the president of Evo was outed for sexual harassment, and was immediately outed from the group, and like. It really hurt Evo's reputation, obviously. Um, so I think that's probably why it was up for sale, because <laughs> they just needed somebody else to run it. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think that's a factor. Also, hasn't Sony? I, I mean, I don't. I've n- never really watched all that much Evo. Um, haven't they? Hasn't PlayStation been like a major sponsor of Evo for the past few years anyway? That I don't know. Um, but what I did see. Uh, mm-hmm. so- I, I was catching up on a bunch of this uh, after Vicky got home uh, in preparation for the podcast tonight. And one of the things that I saw people talking about was whether or not the uh, the Evo going forward would feature games, the fighting games like Street Fighter V, for example, or, you know, um, assuming Street Fighter VI is, is uh, you know, exclusive, whether or not this would focus on mostly titles that only show up in PlayStation consoles. I'm like, no. Like they they no, they said they said enough. they're still supporting like, all platforms, w- right? Yeah. So, but I mean, but I mean, they said that, but y- you know how people on the internet are. They're like, oh, you know. So I think, so, I, I don't think, think anybody needs to worry about that. Yeah, I mean, without following it too closely, it seems to me that PlayStation is kind of already uh, does have a really strong place in the fighting game community. Like, it seems like that's where. I mean, we know they had the partnership with Street Fighter Five, where that was like PS Four and and PC only and stuff like that. Um, and even just looking at this, you know, the roster for this year, uh, I think Guilty Gear, Mortal Kombat, and Street Fighter V are the, the platform for those for Evo is PlayStation. 
and then the only other one on there is Tekken 7 on PC. So, but I mean, they do have Tekken on there on a different platform. So, you know, it, I don't think they're going to force anything. I just, I think they know they have the advantage there. And aside from, I guess, Killer Instinct's been pretty big for Microsoft this gen, but it doesn't seem like we've heard anything about Microsoft planning to really uh, pursue fighting games in any meaningful way. So I think Sony knows they don't really need to do much. Um, yeah, I don't know. And maybe they'll, I don't know enough about um, Evil, but it's possible they could uh, you know, leverage some of this to expand. Like they do have a pretty robust um, esports arm with what they do with Gran Turismo and the online league for those. So uh, maybe there's there's some angle to this that I'm not aware of that's going to let them kind of uh, improve or do some of that better too. Yeah, I, I you know, I, I don't really... I don't have too many opinions on this one because I, I know that like Evo is huge, right? I aside from Smash Brothers and and like you know Street Fighter, I I am not a huge fighting game guy, so I don't pay a whole lot of attention to Evo. That being said, I know that Evo itself is huge, um, and this is this is interesting to me. Um, you know, we've been you know you mentioned uh, that. Uh, you know, PlayStation has been pretty involved in the past uh, with with Evo. Um, I I wonder what their reason for actually purchasing the tournament itself was, though, um, because for me, like this this just came completely out of left field. I was like, whoa, like that's that because you know we hear about we hear about Game Studio, we we hear about like you know one of the big three picking up Game Studios. It seems fairly frequently these days. Like you know when you think about. Uh, Bethesda well, you hear about Microsoft, Microsoft picking up studios yeah. fairly and, frequently and, these days. <laughs> well, also, like you know, Sony and Insomniac. Um, uh, you know, and I, there are rumors going around that Sony's going to pick up Blue Point, which would not surprise me at all. Um, you know, but something like this, I think, like when was the last time we heard one, uh, like Sony, Microsoft, or Nintendo picking up, like, like a, a, a tournament, um, so or. Like, like an event that's interesting I, I do have some theories on that it seems sony as a whole is kind of leveraging a lot of like cross media and like leveraging because like a lot of the purchases they've made lately like they bought um crunchyroll that they're do they're going in on a lot of anime stuff and they um, just but rebooted that they had that sony pictures uh and like television division as well that they're yeah kinda... yeah that, that's focused on playstation and mm -hmm. stuff so i think it's just like kind of um another way they can kind of merge some of like their different branches under under different umbrellas for getting their name out there like esports is something that the platform holders don't haven't really had a big hand in which is kind of odd considering how big esports is becoming um and i think it's probably some you know kind of i wouldn't be surprised like jeff mentioned there's the big gran turismo uh, esports scene. I wouldn't be surprised if like we're gonna start to see maybe some more multiplayer stuff out of Sony, um, and then maybe you know trying to leverage esports a bit more. Yeah, it that... seems like a like a future move. I mean, it didn't pan out, but I think back to when they bought Gaikai. Uh, <laughs> but like they, they well, see, that was a while ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but like you know that was like a thing where they're they're trying to they're trying to read the board five moves ahead and see where is yeah. the industry going. And they knew. I mean, obviously streaming hasn't really stadia and amazon haven't helped anyone but like that hasn't taken off the way they probably thought it would but that's probably another piece here is they see that esports section continuing to grow and this is probably them just getting their foot in the game early and, and having a piece to play um and build with what were you gonna say yeah, John? i was just no i was just gonna say bringing up guy kai man that's yeah, fucking old like school that like <laughs> guy kai and of course we all know that uh sony treated that studio and that idea with the with the tender care uh, that it that it absolutely and the the attentiveness that it absolutely deserved, uh, which I mean, has it's led... PlayStation now it's right, it, it's yeah, around yeah. still. Yeah, it's like it's to... not like they shut it down. No, no, no. What I'm saying is it's it led to the incredible success story that is PlayStation now. Um, it I remember when PlayStation now revolutionized the industry, uh, and and it continues to 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 break those barriers to this day. Um, PlayStation now does. You got, so got speaking... any more? I'm not I'm not being serious for anybody listening on podcast services. Come on, so guys. Speaking of kind of surprise future looking announcements and stuff from Sony, we got another one today that I wasn't expecting. 
oh, where they actually yeah. they actually um, showcased the new controllers for the yeah. next generation PlayStation VR. Um, they they're basically the Ocul Oculus Quest controllers, right. essentially. Um, At least which using uh, the the what at the time the the, the, the PlayStation, PlayStation moves the moves were like what four years old at that point already or something like oh, I mean more than that they were two thousand ten. They were from 2010, like yeah, a long ass time. With the getting wow. a hold, getting a hold of moves is such That's a pain. Up. I had one die, and I had to replace it for my PSVR, and it was not an easy process. Someone actually pointed out that these new ones are basically just the Sony Ericsson logo, which was like also <laughs> yeah. But um, so basically, they're like the Oculus Quest controllers, but they have the haptic feedback and um, resistive triggers that the PS the DualSense has, which is awesome um that stuff could be amazing for vr um i'm really excited about psvr 2 i think just the combination of being built on the ps5's processing power versus the ps4's is massive but also now it's going to be one wire which is so much better than the ridiculous the thing, wires set up the for whole the, thing between like the whole thing behind psvr 2 is just crazy to me because i was convinced that that this was not this was an idea that they weren't going to revisit I was convinced. I, see, see, I always thought, I think this is it. Mm -hmm. I think if PSVR 2 isn't successful, I think that's where they um, so gotta just let it die. That's where they leave it. Because B PSVR was kind of slapped together. It was, I mean, it, it was like, oh, we're leveraging the PlayStation camera, lights, the moves for controllers. Yeah, it was shit that already existed. Like, yeah. um, it was... It was them throwing a lot of different technologies together just to try, just to do a proof of concept that you can get a decent VR experience on a console. Um, but the way th VR has evolved, I think Sony's in a very good place to actually deliver something that can be comparable to the current high end PC VR experiences. Um, and I'm really excited to see what kind of games they get going. Um, like having proper VR controllers, like if you haven't used like the big VR stuff and used proper VR controllers, like it's so much different than even even the moves. Like it it really, really adds so much to the experience. And like with more accurate tracking, better controllers, better screen, <laughs> better hardware, like PSVR two is going to be a massive, massive leap from the first PSVR and like I'm surprised that they're giving out information this early but I think it was pro I think it's probably like with the dual sense where they knew this was going to leak because they're sending stuff out to developers relatively soon um that was kind of why they announced the dual sense when they did um but kind of out of no it was like 5 p.m. on a Friday they're like oh here's the PS5 controller um and I think that's kind of the same thing that they did with um these new um vr controllers so that that was cool i wasn't expecting to see that i i wasn't expecting to see psvr 2 period <laughs> so i i think the whole thing is i think the whole thing is pretty cool especially since i had such a bad uh such a bad um uh kind of experience with psvr to begin with like i can use an oculus quest 2 and be fine uh, but PSVR like literally made me fucking sick. Like I could not have that thing on my head for more than ten minutes at a time before I just wanted to fucking just vomit like a fucking fire breathing dragon all over the place. It do was we, awful. Do we have any kind of like timeline or ETA on PSVR, dude? Because I'm thinking like they really so. need just, to fix the production problems with the PS5 because they need a well, yeah, I think base to launch that with. They, they said it's not launching this year. Okay. Okay. Um. Right. So I. I wouldn't be surprised if maybe it was before the holidays in 2022. Yeah. Um, just because this much information seems odd, like that long before, mm -hmm. but, um, especially if we see pictures of the controllers and stuff, like those are usually yeah. in the, like, each yeah, week's pretty close to release. As you remember, so with the I ran controller for the PS3. <laughs> so I, I think, um, so I, yeah, we just know it's not releasing this year. So don't get your hopes up for, holiday psvr2 because it's you heard it here happening. for holiday 2021 psvr2 retailing at 299 comes with what comes with one pair of controllers you heard it here right here now we can all be disappointed and mad at sdgc when it doesn't happen <laughs> disclaimer john's talking out of his ass <laughs> sorry his ass end um okay so 
I, uh, I guess we got a lot of Square Enix stuff we could talk about. I'm going to... Yeah. There was an event today, apparently. Um, I'm going to run through what I think is the boring stuff really quickly so we can get to the good stuff. Um, so you, you could stop me if you really want to talk about this. I guess they showed Outriders again. Does anyone... Outriders, anyone? Anyone? No, I literally turned my fucking brain off for Outriders. No, no offense to anyone who likes Outriders. I just don't. I think they just kind of showed a trailer, another update. Um, I don't think there was it much just there. Looks so boring. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. It's the 25th anniversary of Tomb Raider. Uh, Croft Manor is coming to Fortnite, and there's a trilogy bundle with all three of the Tomb Raider games. Uh, in case you haven't played one of the five million updates for any of the seven consoles the last few years, uh, and you can finally <laughs> see Lara become the Tomb Raider. At last, I wait, did she actually become the Tomb oh, Raider? Maybe. I don't think no, she I, did. No, I no, don't. It, it's not no. clear. It does not seem like she becomes the Tomb Raider at the end of Shadow. Did she wake like, up and say, "I'm going to become the Tomb Raider"? <laughs> there we go. Hey, there see, we go. see, John, go. John, that was how you do it. That was how you do it. Um, timing, John. That was good. Uh, yeah, no, I I could rant about shadow the tomb raider for a long time so, uh, so, so is there like a title raider. of tomb raider in that universe where she's like no she's like, no she's like striving for uh, it they literally like, okay they've point. used the same tagline for all three games i've been training <laughs> you to become the tomb raider the tomb raider is a like, symbol john anyone can be the tomb raider you could be so, the tomb raider <laughs> so so, so what you're saying, Jeff, is you can either live long enough, or you can either uh, live long no. enough to see no. the villain, or die, or or die and become the Tomb Raider, like something it, like here, that. Here's my thing. Here's my thing. Here's my thing. Right? If you've raided one fucking tomb as she did in the very first game, aren't you're you a already? A, you're a Tomb Raider, right? Like, no, you got to work your way up to that. It might be you like know you know. Like, I don't know if you, you guys know any engineers, but I think after you finish with like an engineering degree, like to get your ring, you have to actually do like a certain amount. You have to kind of work your way up and earn it. So it could be like yeah. a, or maybe there's like a journeyman first before you can become like a full fledged tomb raider. I'm not sure. Like a tomb, like a like a journeyman raider. Yeah, or, yeah something like or that. Or like a, a, a raider of the lost ark, so to speak, before you become a tomb raider. Um, I just like, is there a Tomb Raider school that you attend? Like, I don't know, like <laughs> I don't community know. college credit. I think Laura, you just have to be like English and really but, rich, and really rich. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Just desecrating, like, you know, <laughs> yeah. brown people, stomping all stuff, over other then... people's cultures. Yeah, <laughs> oh, just oh, fucking oh, it right up, good. and then storing it all in your mansion. I... <laughs> yeah, like, it's, it's you know, the it, belongs, way. it belongs in a mansion. Um, you know. I also I think we really need to specify what constitutes a tomb because it feels like Lara throughout the series, like she goes cave spelunking, but there aren't a whole lot of actual tombs. Like, like most, of con- most, most of them most are. Most of them are. John, it like, literally like, says tomb raided on the screen whenever you complete does one. It? <laughs> like oh, like the tomb. Dark Souls text? Like Yeah. No, no, not like the Dark Souls text, unfortunately. <laughs> oh not, man, it should. Yes. It fu- like if if they did that, I I would respect that series so much more. <laughs> There are bonfires. There are bonfires. There are, oh, right. as well. there are bonfires. They might as well. There are bonfires. Like, does anybody else think it's weird that, like, you know, we're getting a trilogy of the Tomb Raider, Rise of the Tomb Raider, and Shadow. I can't even say those fucking two titles without, I can't take it seriously. But what about the original three PlayStation games? It's weird that they, those have not been released. They So they remade them on the 360 and PS3. Um, like, well, they remade the first one. It was called Tomb Raider Anniversary. Um, I would love if, like, Crystal Amics or, what is that, who's the other one? Idos Montreal would remake Once the Fucking Dinosaurs with, like, the current engine. That'd be fucking dope as hell. That was the first Tomb Raider, um, right? It had the Tyrannosaurus Rex in it? Yeah. There was dinosaurs was in Tomb Raider? Yeah. Yeah, yeah in the old ones. Yeah. Shit. There's some wild shit in, to- in the old Tomb Raider <laughs> Are those oh, canon? Yeah. Man. yeah. Well, I think not so. anymore. Oh, they're not oh, canon oh, to the oh, new no. series. No, they're, they're not canon. Reboot. Well, there, she was already the Tomb Raider in the first three games. That's She's true. not the Tomb Raider yet. So I think an official Tomb Raider canon, if you're going by the established timeline that <laughs> everybody knows, uh, everybody knows exists, um, then by that measure, the first three Tomb Raider games have actually not happened, even though they already came out. In the canon no, Tomb Raider timeline, 
she's already the Tomb Raider in those older games. This is how she becomes the reboot. Raider, right? Reboot rules. Well, the fourth, fourth, the fourth new, like the new Tomb Raider comes out. That'll be the one where she has earned her license, her ring. Her so, <laughs> wait, by the way, yeah. by the way, it always. I'm just gonna rant about this because I could rant about things with this series a lot. But the one thing that always drove me nuts is at the end of the first game, she gets the dual pistols, and you use I... it to fight the final boss. So iconic. And so I thought that was like a symbolic. Okay, you know now she's Lara, and then you never, never use them again, again in never in either again. of the other games. They're just thrown away like and symbolic. forgotten. Was it as good as Kratos getting back the blades of chaos? No, oh, even better, even better, Jeff. I I was like, I stood up and I yelled, I yelled, I yelled, iconic at the top of my fucking lungs, <laughs> and I immediately did fifty push-ups. Okay, like, we we got way more mileage out of Tomb Raider than I thought we would. There, so I, congratulations I like, I like to the everyone. Tomb Raider trilogy, it's fine. I've I don't want to. I won't be mean. Go. <laughs> I've, got they're, more, they're games. I've got more. I've got more Tomb no, Raider. No, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. If you want? No, you sure? Um, all right. All right. Let's let's see what we can do with this one. Uh, Just Cause is getting a mobile game. It's called Just Give Cause Mobile. Let's go. No, I'm kidding. Let's fucking go. Fucking <laughs> dead <laughs> silence. Just <laughs> just dead air. <laughs> I mean, I, I honestly, I honestly can't believe that's a thing that actually exists. Like, who gives a fuck? Like, the Just Cause games don't sell well anyway. They do okay. They don't. don't. They? I mean, there's four of them. They have to sell all right. <laughs> I mean, they sell. I mean, I, they sell the bare minimum of what it takes to produce a sequel. Like, um, that's making. That's like paying for someone's dinner, John. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's there. <laughs> like, look, all I'm saying is this. I, those games are are so rote that I, I just like I played I played just the I didn't play four I played three and that motherfucker struggled to run. Like, no, no, that, like, game, that, game, that game does not run on consoles. Game, right? I'm it, gonna need a I sales thought... comparison between Just Cause and Bravely Default because I I'm really curious which one sold more. Oh, I'm sure the Just Cause games sell more for sure. Um, because it, you know, I mean, the Just Cause games also show up on a lot of the like subscription services yeah, that's true. and stuff right, too that's, so that's, that's, a lot of people end up playing them down the line and you know developers get paid other ways than just sales so all right there, there is, i promise we're getting to good news eventually uh this one's <laughs> kind of interesting because i didn't expect this uh there's also a new hitman mobile game coming called hitman sniper assassins and sniper i thought assassin. io had hitman back i didn't realize that square still had a i a, think square uh, has the license to make mobile games based off of it was that what hitman go was as well was that a mobile game? yes okay was yes mobile. and that was that was a square enix game mm -hmm. i heard that was actually a decent game yeah people uh, like hitman deus ex and tomb raider go are all mm -hmm. solid actually yeah so i don't know there, there was just a teaser trailer i don't think there's much there that was just uh interesting because i didn't know they were they were still producing games um outside uh, of io but it's a good time to be a hitman fan i guess uh there was some decent Avengers news, so I guess the uh, uh, yeah I know I know no I know John it's okay we're, we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna talk about Avengers for a few minutes so I think no 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 I've actually got I know I've got things to okay. talk about with Avengers okay perfect so I believe uh, they did reveal Black Panther is coming to Avengers and they the did. Yeah. the next gen updates are officially out as of today is that correct. Yeah, they have it out. I have mine. I have mine installed yeah. and stuff. Transfer your save the... file from PS4 to PS5 is a simple 23 step process. It's not. <laughs> okay, you need the going... PS4 version installed apparently, so don't delete yeah, it. Yeah, every, everybody's going in on that, but it's the same process for every game that's gotten one of these. But it still like, sucks. Updates. No, no, I know the process <laughs> sucks, but people are like really singling out Avengers for it. Mm. And I think. I, I... I think that's kind of unfair to put that all on Square Enix. I mean, it's Sony's problem, because... right? Because... No, it's so it's absolutely Sony's yeah. problem. Yeah, no, no, like, I know. it's what I, I had to do for Crash like... Four. Yeah, it's I'm what I had to do of... for. No, I, I've I've had several games where I've had to do this for. Um, so if only there was like, a people... smart way to deliver all that progress. Like, yeah, to... only CJ, only someone to come up with. I don't know a smart. A smarter delivery system, like I... exactly. <laughs> How else will I fill my hard drive? <laughs> X marks the spot. <laughs> uh, no, I, I. So I, I, you know, with with, with Avengers, you know, I saw, you know, you know, 
granted we don't know much about it but the wakanda stuff looks cool like i'm a i'm a huge fan of black panther um that said like did anybody like i know i know I know that Clint Barton has multiple outfits, but did, did anybody else find it weird that they chose to, they, they're choosing to market him as just like a fucking, do, like a milk toast douchebag wearing jeans and a purple all, shirt. Like I, I've said it, I've I said it before, but like all of the default outfits in Avengers are terrible. They're terrible. Like, <laughs> because they I want you them. to buy the cool ones, right? Yeah. They want you to pay money for the cool ones. Uh, they're so bad. And he just looks like, he looks like a f- – and his and this is bogging me, and i got to say it. His head is too fucking small for his body. It is. He, why does he have such a tiny fucking head? Are you sure like, he doesn't have a giant body? body? Is he not just super jacked? No, no, dude, no, 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 dude. Hawkeye, his fucking head, it's like a pea sitting on top of an orange. It doesn't make any fucking sense. His head is enormous. All right. So oh, chat his body's enormous and his head is way too fucking small. So uh chat is challenging us on this. That is his costume from the faction run, which I, I'm pretty sure is the comics. This is a popular costume that people actually like. I think it's a terrible costume. And you're not this a real sucks. Hawkeye fan. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it sounds like someone's not a real <laughs> Hawkeye fan. Hey, fuck you, man. Oh, fuck's a Hawkeye fan. Just got a frame. Just got a frame. <laughs> Just out of frame. You can't see all my fucking Clint Barton posters and figures and fucking shirts and statues. Like, you can't see that shit. It's literally a foot away from me. It's just out of frame. It's just out of frame. I love white guys with arrows. (laughs) (laughs) Hell yeah, bro. Hell yeah. In in a universe where I can pick between a giant green monster or a dude who has, like, a suit made out of uh, vibranium, no, I want the white dude who can shoot, like, a few arrows and then gets his fucking mind controlled in the first fucking Avengers movie. Also, also he's the second Hawkeye added to Avengers. Both of them post. Like, I just think, (laughs) I'm sorry, I just think it's so funny that, like, both of the um like both of the characters added to um to avengers post-launch have been just two different hawkeyes um fuck yeah. fuck spider-man like, fuck you know fucking doctor, doctor strange. strange fuck uh what is it uh fuck uh who was it who's uh scarlet witch fuck uh vision fuck um winter soldier all these other cool characters no you're gonna get two people Dude, and they two build up and they they mentioned cap they mentioned Captain Marvel so many times in the campaign. And so I thought or I thought this year we would absolutely see Captain Marvel being added in. Nah. Is I, I, I really want my white dude wearing a t-shirt. I, I don't like, want to like, disrespect look. the developers, but like maybe it's just way easier to make another bow and arrow character, like a thousand games well, than to come up okay, with a cool I mean, Marcus Strange. The the thing that So this is kind of the thing. I actually liked the campaign of Avengers. I I really enjoyed it. I think the core gameplay is fun. It's just the loot system and like the service stuff just doesn't work. Um and so I was looking forward to the hero drops because they come with like a couple hours of story story missions with them. It's not just like, oh, here's a new character you can pick. Like they actually do introduce them and stuff. And the plan was it was supposed to be monthly. So like Every month there was supposed to be a new character and, you know, That's new panned out beautifully. missions. Uh, and here we are six months later and we've got two Hawkeyes. So, so and that's um, the thing. That's the thing, Justin, is like, Kate Bishop like, is a cool character. Yeah, Kate, cool Kate, character. Kate's really cool. Yeah, like, um, and, and I do think having multiple Hawkeyes does kind of make it. So, like, if, if you want to play as Hawkeye, there is at least two choices because you can't play as the same character as another person. So, like, one person can be Kate, one person can, can be Clint. That makes sense to me. But, like, I thought they would try to at least get, like, more characters. E- like, even if it wasn't the, like, big headlining characters that play totally different, I thought they would at least try to get, like, more characters like that in to be kind of, like, so multiple people could at least, like... S- like do so, like Winter Soldier or something you're, as so, like a counterpart to Captain America kind of thing. Here's the real question surrounding uh, Avengers for me, and I'll throw this out to the group: um, is it, it's just not very popular. Like I get that it has fans, and I'm you know like yeah. you know not shitting on you if you like it, but I mean on Steam for example, yesterday there were 300 people playing Avengers. Okay, that's on um, PC, and I'm, but like I'm sure there are more. I'm sure there are more on console, but. At the same time, I mean, I mean, I 
I know of a couple people who play it, and I have asked them how often, how long does it take you to find a full match? And they say we never, like, I almost never find a full match. There's not a lot of people playing this game, and I wonder. And and, and so so far we've got, like Justin said, we've had we've had two Hawkeyes uh, in the six months since the game is released. Um, how long? And I'll throw it to CJ first how long do we see them supporting this game for? Like realistically, if, because there is a wealth of Marvel characters to pick from. And if we've got two in six months, like, I don't know, man. So the way I see it, and this is like a worst case or just like me, like kind of like talking out my ass. Um, so this is crystal Dynamics' baby. They're going to do whatever they can. Square Enix has pumped. I don't know how much money into this game and how many like years and manpower they're going to have to see it till it's done. Mm-hmm. I think think unless let's say marvel and disney come in and do like what they did with ea and we're like all right no you, you guys clearly aren't like this isn't working out um but I, I i see them just sort of like fighting it out to the very end they're gonna do all they can until something drastic happens like you know square realizes okay this is not worth it clearly square sees something something sh- i mean here, there is tons right? of, it's it's marvel like there's tons of potential mm-hmm well, I, I'm talking, yeah, but like it's really, you know, they dropped the um, like today they had they had to delay the um, the current gen patch, um, so they're they're putting money into it to continue to support it. They they have like you know how these heroes drop, they just announced Black Panther. They're they're gonna put in the work. I just I see them. I don't see them giving up, but not because they truly believe in this game, but because they feel like they have to because they've already sunk in the so sunk much money into fa- this game. Sunk yeah. cost fallacy, basically. That, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. I'm saying they'll 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 have Eidos Montreal make the next Tomb Raider game. They'll have them make the next Deus Ex game. They'll have them do all that work, right? They 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 were working as support studios for um for Avengers, so they're gonna have them do like whatever other like Western Square Enix game there needs to be. This is like this is all hands on deck. They have to they have to see this to the end. I think. CJ, I just want to say I truly admire your optimism and thinking we're gonna get another Deus Ex game. Like I, I don't I, care about Deus Ex. I really don't. I just I just figure. I, you know what I'm saying? I, I just I just I I enjoy those games, and we're not gonna get another one. That series is. I I love those games. Yeah, I, I, I think want another Tomb Raider game. I I don't want to go into Deus Ex uh, uh, discourse, but I, I think there's a big hole like that Cyberpunk whiffed on. But there's like an appetite for that kind of game, and I think Deus Ex I could be. I, I think if if they get a really clever marketing team behind it, I could see them bringing it back in a couple of years and just nudging it a little bit in that direction, but keeping all the stuff that makes the series great and being like, "Oh, this is the game you really wanted." I don't know. I think that'd be a smart play. But uh, we got a half hour left, and I think we can spend a half hour on Life is Strange. So we have. Never... Well, there's one other little thing too. I was going to leave that one to the end. Are you talking about Forspoken? Yeah. Well, well, I, I figured we were going to end on Life is... I thought you... No, okay. I figured we were going to end on Balan Wonderworld, man. We got we, we, we to gotta talk oh, yeah. about Balan. Was Balan there? They got Balan a new trailer. Was... Hell, hell yeah. Trailer. Yeah. Hell and yeah. I am so... <laughs> Are you really? <laughs> Did his camera freeze? I don't know if he actually... <laughs> I, I legit <laughs> thought he froze. <laughs> I legit thought he froze. I look going for you to... All right. No, I was just going to... I'm really excited for that game. Are you really? CJ <laughs> has nothing to say about Balan Underworld. Hey, hey no. look. Look, here's yeah. the thing. Balan Wonderworld. Let me tell you about Balan Wonderworld. Um, that demo was not good at all. It was not a good it demo. It does bad. not sell me on the game at all. I don't think the game will be good. It won't. I mean... I think it's going to be they, one of those things where... They released a statement saying... We don't have time to fix anything from the yeah. feedback from the demo, which is they can't. Th- it's it's they can't they, like. There's like um a day one patch, and I'm like, yeah, okay, sure. Are you gonna patch and down like install a different game? I guess I don't know. Like, what? There's no possible fix patch, for what the patch like, what the game was... into Final Fantasy VI on on modern consoles. Oh it's fuck you, way, John! I don't fucking play Final <laughs> Fantasy VI. I want a platformer. That's the fuck only you. way. To... <laughs> God, damn. Um, but no, like I'm genuinely look. Here's the thing, and I talked about it with Finn. It's like it's one of those things where, if if I was six years old again and I and I was playing something on my GameCube, Battle Wonderworld would have been it. That would have been the game I rented for all spring break from Blockbuster. It would have been the greatest thing of all time. Now this is me trying to like like reconnect. I know it's not going to be good. I don't think it'll be good. I don't have that much faith in Yuji Naka, and that's hurting me because I'm a huge Sonic the Hedgehog fan. 
it's not going to be good it's not, at no, all. It's really not. It's not. I, I apologize. I'm getting a review code from from the site I write for, and I'm not. And I'm looking forward to just playing it and getting my thoughts out there, but not necessarily because I think those thoughts are going to be good. So, I somebody actually posted something in chat that I do want to mention before we we move on. So, did anybody else watch the Dying Light Two update video? I heard yeah. about it, and then I didn't hear anything okay. about it, and I was like, "Man, that it, must have been a big nothing burger." It, I mean, se- <laughs> it seems like a joke. Uh, but, but here's the thing, Justin. Like they said, it's coming in 2021. So I mean, like I don't get all the all the hate and discontent about it. Like, they, they, okay, they, they basically made fun of people for asking questions about if the game was still in development, and. They said it's coming this year, which I do not believe. And remember, oh. this is just a few weeks after there were, was a major report about toxic work conditions at that studio, um, saying they were bleeding talent and that it's very heavily mismanaged and management is not treating the workers well. I must have missed that. I didn't. See that. Yeah, no. This is this was basically their response to that. They didn't say a word about working conditions at the studio at all. Um, uh, okay. And uh, so, like, like it was developers reading. I mean, the tweets that they read were kind of shitty, but it was just like a developers read mean tweets. But like, the whole thing was just kind of sneering at the whole idea that anybody would want information and an update and then he posted it saying that this was going to be the first update on the game in a long time and they just said oh it's coming this year which again doubt like it was it was really really weird yeah i mean i i liked the first dying light i you know i'm not i'm not drool i'm not you know foaming at the mouth to play dying light too it'll come out when it comes out it's going to need to be really good because, yeah, it, it feels like people are excited yeah. about the sequel and now it's just like, give it to me. Better be good. Yeah. Kind of yeah. check sure out it'll, be, it'll be a solid 7 out of 10 like the yeah. first one was. Um, okay, so, yeah, like Justin mentioned, uh, and Justin, I'll let you elaborate on this if there's anything more. So Project uh, Athea, uh, its real yeah. name is Forspoken, and we got a new trailer. Is there anything significant beyond the, the kind of retitle? Uh, it's scheduled for next year. Um, so we actually do have a window of 2022, which, given Square Enix's usual um, timeline from when they announce something with project in the name, that seem that seems earlier than I expected. <laughs> uh, PS5, PC, um, mm-hmm. traversal and stuff looked really cool in the, in the video. I, I really liked what they showed of it today. Yeah, I don't have I don't have anything to add. Um, I. What's up? I, I... No, 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 no. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, no, I, I had, I literally had nothing. We we're going to move on to Life is Strange unless you got something. Okay, bad. that's fine. That's fine. Now, now, I will preface this by saying, I have never played any of the Life is Strange games. All right. So John is just going to go grill a steak or something while we talk. I'm going to go Life make Strange. a hamburger. <laughs> uh, you guys just go yeah. Strange. So there's a bit of Life is Strange news. Um, two big announcements. I guess we'll start with the first one. The first two games. Um, both the original Life is Strange and Before the Storm, which was the prequel starring Chloe, uh, are getting remasters. So those will get lots of visual upgrades. They're hitting PC, I assume. I think the remasters are coming to last gen as well as like PS5 and, and Xbox series. Is that correct? Yeah, it's weird. I, I'm i not sure. Okay, we're not sure. Don't quote us on that. Probably. And also they're currently oh. only available in like a pre-order bundle with Life is Strange. Both games come together, with the right? new Yeah. Yeah. Well, no, I think oh. you like you can't buy that bundle separately. It's like it's a pre-order bundle of the new game coming in September as well oh. as the two remasters. Yeah, it's, like, uh, it's a part of like the deluxe edition, I think. That's yeah, so it's like sucks. you have to buy like a hundred dollar edition <laughs> to get them right now. Like they said, they will be available separately later. Okay. but it's we it's weird. That's weird. really strange. All right. Yeah. So right now, yeah, you have to you have to shell out some cash if you want and, all of them. And no trailer shown. I don't think. I think we saw some screenshots. Or was there a trailer? Oh, life is, oh, no, there was absolutely a trailer. Like, for, there was okay. a big, for Life is Strange, no. Like, there was a big show. Like, that game had a No, big, he's talking about the remasters. The remasters. Oh, the remasters. Okay. Yeah. Not uh, the new one. No. Yeah. It was just... But, I mean, you know, like, there was, a, there was like, I think a clip of a, of a cutscene, Justin, if I'm not mistaken correctly. Um, and that's about it. Um, 
I again, mean, I didn't play those games, so I don't have a good I don't have a good sense for what they looked like uh, before before the remaster. C- CJ, I think you had some thoughts on Life is Strange. Uh, like, what did you did you play both the first games? So I I've, I've I I didn't finish the first game, and I'm like working my way through the second game. But the reason why, like that that game hit me harder than any other game I've played. Um, because what's weird is right right you don't I I always like in video games to like they're always like these big trying to reach like the the widest margin of an audience right they're not really meant to be these deep engaging stories even the best games that everyone says have these these amazing stories and this great writing never lives up to it in my opinion so you know popping in life is strange 2 for the first time a friend of mine told me you know you should play this game because it it features latinx characters and i'm like it's probably gonna be something where a character is gonna say something in spanish that doesn't fit right and no what what i what i found was this really endearing and wonderful look and what it's like growing up um as the the son of an immigrant and i saw the the same way i grew up um here in miami where it's just everyone speak you know most people most of your peers speak spanish you know you, you grow up with a little bit of like whatever either the trauma or the wonderful things from like your parents countries i saw my relationship with my dad in the game and it completely broke me so i i think these games are very important in that like this i didn't see the trailer for this new one because i didn't watch this event because but i i i whatever i had like from the memories life is strange too i'm like okay well i'm i'm happy that this it's it's like their other team i think doing it right like not 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 the, it's the one it's the did, team that did uh, before the storm the, mm-hmm. did they do twin mirror too or was that not not like directly so i think it's deck nine i don't think it's don't nod i f- at least okay. that's deck what nine's I think do- it is. yeah like who did yeah that's the thing but um it's, like, it's I the like team that made before the storm i know that okay, okay so yeah so i and it's it's not episodic so i'm i'm, I'm excited for that because i played twin mirror and i and i love that it was like just one full playthrough of this like one story and that's it i have to wait like mm-hmm. so you play two hours of one chapter go on to the next um, so I'm excited for for more of this. I have to finish Life is Strange too, but I really liked it. Uh, I have to play but Life is Strange too, but I I didn't know I I I kind of soured on the first game at the end. But I love Before the Storm. I thought that was like uh, they removed some of the supernatural stuff to an extent, but I thought the writing in that game was like very natural uh, and very believable. I mean, it's still like a little video gamey at times but it was uh it, it's <laughs> life is strange too so far like they, they get a lot of the the way you know <laughs> like like the dialogue is better mm-hmm. but it has that tinge of like okay this is clearly translated from another another language right yeah. it's that very it's that sense or, or like, sometimes oh, okay. it's like this is a 30 year old dude writing like a 16 year old or something like that like <laughs> yeah, i'm like oh that i'm like oh but it, overall like from again from what i play it's solid like it it mm-hmm. gets it gets it right and i and i appreciate games like these right because it's in a genre that isn't as like mm-hmm. you know it's not a shooter it's not an action adventure game it's like an episodic point and click adventure mm-hmm um, Justin, I don't know if you have anything like... to add before we, we talk about the the sequel announcement. Yeah, no, I, I'm I'm looking forward to these. Um, I loved loved the first Life is Strange. Um, I, I really did, but I never got a chance to play before the. I didn't play to, before the storm because I know there was. Um, I know, like, there was some issues with um, like union stuff with like voice actors and stuff. So I kind of avoided. Uh, before the storm because i know they changed the voice actor for chloe um but i know they've kind of since worked that out i think there was a bonus episode where um you know she came back and stuff so i i didn't get around to that and i never got around to life is strange too which i'm really bummed about i'm gonna grab that on sale i think the next mm-hmm. time i see it but same i need to um, play that for sure i got it for 12 uh, bucks it's great yeah so i but like i i have a lot of respect for don't nod as as a team um i think they do really great writing um, and I really, I really enjoy um, their games, so I'm looking forward to seeing what comes next. I, you know, the Life is Strange games, like I can already tell, like it's just not my, it's not my genre, it's not my kind of game. But what I do really love and appreciate about them are the very visceral reactions they inspire in people who do love them. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, like you know, uh, um, you know, uh, Natalie uh, Hardamishi on Twitter, good friend of ours. Um, I mean, look at her reactions on Twitter today. I mean, she was beside herself about what she saw. Um, you know, these Bronson, games, Bronson was losing Bronson it over the new one. Yeah, like, I yeah. mean, these games mean a lot to a lot of people. Um, and that right there, like, you know, I don't feel overly compelled to play them simply because I don't 
think that that the, that's the experience that's going to do it for me. But I also really love what Don't Not has managed to create because the reactions you see about Life is Strange in people really that's that's what that's what this medium is all about, right? Like the 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 joy and the happiness, uh, and the emotions that these games can, can can kind of bring forth out of us. You know, those reactions that we get when we see something that that has touched our you know touched our touched our hearts in such a way mm -hmm. that we didn't think possible. And and you see a lot of that with uh, with Life is Strange, and that is something that. You know, I love seeing my friends happy, and and I saw my friends happy today. Very, very happy about what they saw, um, and and so that that to me is that to me is the best part about all this. I do have a question, since I've never played Life is Strange. At any point in the games, does somebody look at the look at the other and say, you know, life really is strange? Yes. Are you serious? Well, no. Do they? They, they, they say, <laughs> I don't life, remember honestly. They they they, they say um. Life is, and then there's a pause. Weird. <laughs> they, oh, they, no, that's no, that's not the same, Justin. I was hoping that somebody but was pretty like, close. Like, I was, uh, no, no, I was hoping somebody would just like look at a character and be like, you know, life really is strange. Kind of like how in the Last of Us, when Ellie said, you know, Joel, we really are the Last of Us. You know, like I'll, like, I'll never forget. Society we I'm, live in is really strange. I, I'm sorry, I don't want to, I don't want to derail this further, but I'll never forget that that site. I think it's like WCCF tech or whatever, ran a super serious article uh, and actually uh, referenced the fact that Joel says, uh, you know, Ellie, we really are the last of us in the last of us game when they were talking about. <laughs> they did. Fun, oh, fact, fun, fun fact, that line is never actually uttered. We're fucking around. Like th that line is never. Yeah. Sh uttered, shocking yeah, news but... that a game yeah. that people love the story and writing yeah. in doesn't have that line yeah. <laughs> that, that would have been the game for like an 11 i don't know what you're talking <laughs> yeah. about like, no, like, <laughs> like just, just at a pivotal moment when they've killed a bunch of clickers joel like lifts his head up and he's like you know ellie we really are the last of us <laughs> <laughs> they're, sa they're saving that to add they they're saving that to add for the hbo series we're gonna we're gonna get <laughs> <laughs> pedro pascal it's gonna cut. It. Re real quick gonna question cut to the credit like a Tom Waits dog is going to play. <laughs> <laughs> Real quick question before I move on to the, uh, I guess the, the announcement, they did announce life is strange three uh, or uh, life is strange. Uh, True colors. Um, I noticed that life is strange two Cause CJ was talking about, it, it wasn't getting a remaster. So I guess, I don't know if anyone was the answer to this is that uh, like the old, the Church other games, game, you know, they're a little true. janky looking was two a little bit more technically advanced. Is that why? Or yeah, I think two, I think two, two's two on, Unreal Engine Four. Okay. So I I think I think and the remasters real... are moving the previous ones to Unreal Engine Four. So, like like Life of Strange Two was built for PS4 also. Like um, what was it? Life of Strange One. I think before the Storm Two, they were out on PS3 and 360. Were they? I, th I think right. So I, I, I want to address something in chat real quick because I think this is funny and it's relevant to what we were just talking about. <laughs> Somebody people were making jokes about saying game titles in in games, right? Somebody said, but there's Evil Within Two. In the Evil Within 2, that line is actually used to break the fourth wall. You have to go through like an hour. You have to go out of your way like an hour to do something, a very certain thing. And when you go back to what's his name? I can't remember his name. I think his name is Jeff. They're having a conversation and Sebastian says, you know, <laughs> Sebastian says, you know, we need to get out of here. And he says, I'm not, I'm not, get, I'm not going out there. It's fucking evil out there, man. And Sebastian says, I know, but there's evil within too. And they both look at the screen like, no, that doesn't happen. No, oh, no, it yeah, no, it it, it, it it absolutely does. That is it, it, that it's is an, art. That's art. It's a, it's an Easter egg, but it was totally worth. It's totally yeah. worth the effort to get. <laughs> Jeff, I'm ta I'm talking like they're looking at each other and they do this. <laughs> that was the. That I was love the real it. Reason. I fucking love it. That was the real reason Microsoft just dropped seven point five billion dollars on do, do that, do that it was again. just it was just just that one that one bit man you really right. are in a death loop <laughs> <laughs> this halo is infinite <laughs> jesus christ years of war keep turning <laughs> 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 i'm really having to reach swimming in a sea of thieves <laughs> i really have to reach for this halo after all <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> my instinct is really killer.
<laughs> we're done. We're, we're almost done. I promise we're almost done. So they did announce the third full Life is Strange game. Uh, it's called Life is Strange True Colors. Um, and the summary I'm looking here is one sentence, and it says it stars Alex Chen, who has to unravel the mysterious death of her brother using an empathy-based psychic ability. So I don't. I haven't actually had a chance to watch the trailer yet. I don't know if anyone wants to elaborate on this new game or give any details on it. I know it looks a lot better than the previous ones. It looks I, nice, and again, it's like one standalone game. Like it's not right, there's episodic, no chapters, which I, right? Which I appre I love. I appreciate I, that. Or it's so it's much. still like in the menu. It's broken into episodes, but they're just they're all launching at the same time. I, I, I it's probably like Twin Mirror, where it's just like one straightforward game. It's in okay. the yeah, in the menu, you start game, and that's it. Okay. So I I have a question. So I noticed that there is a there's an option to have either a male or female uh, uh love interest in this game, which I think is really cool. Um, were these options present in the other Life is Strange games, or is is this the first time that that they're that they're branching out to this? Uh, kind of in the first one, but it was really weird if you went with the male love interest. Are, are you talking, who is that, what was that awkward kid's name? Yeah, the awkward, there's like an awkward kid that's trying to, like, like, ask Max out a few Doesn't times. Doesn't he, like, assault you or something eventually? Oh, I don't, that didn't happen in my playthrough. <laughs> he goes crazy, um, I'm sure. The chat says it's Warren. Warren, okay. Warren. So it was kind of in Life is Strange 1, but it sounds like it's going to be actually make more sense in in true colors because it really didn't make sense if <laughs> like you acted like max and chloe were in together okay yeah no, i, I think want, it, what's that i talk? just want i was gonna say i just want a character to like be painting something and then look at it and say these colors really are true no. that's what i'm really hoping for oh. in life is strange all right oh okay um actually let's place bets now um Will there be an acoustic cover of Cindy Lauper's uh, True Colors in this game? Oh, oh 100%. Like That's a good call. All right, yeah, there. There's, there, All right. there's, there's no way they don't. Like, yeah, there's going to be like, it's going to be like, you know, one woman singing on like with a guitar and that's it. Like, it, it's going to be that. It's going to be like the saddest thing ever. And it's going to play during like the climax of the game. <laughs> perfect. Perfect. Uh, All right. And right, sorry, uh, I just want to say thank you. Betemeister in chat just corrected me. It's, uh, it's, uh, Someone in Before the Storm who goes Stalker Psycho. It's not uh, Warren. So I I would apologize to Warren for slandering his reputation. Well, look, we've all been Warren. Like, hey, <laughs> well, Warren. Warren's just kind of a sad, awkward guy that's trying to ask out a girl that's not yeah. really into him. Oh, Elliot, but... is gonna, <laughs> Elliot is going to get his own game called uh, a Shadow of the uh, Stalker Psycho. <laughs> and then Rise of the Stalker Psycho. He's But, he, but he's not actually going to become the Stalker Psycho. Is that his ring yet? Is that in his ring yet? Jesus. Um, <laughs> so, oh yeah, my I, god! <laughs> like that one. That one is just like slowly seeping in and upsetting me more and more. <laughs> so, uh, Betamaster says Warren is ninety percent nice and ten percent creep. Does that sound accurate? Yeah. I don't. It's been a long time since I played that game. I just remember that he existed. Uh, someone else said Warren st Warren has nice guy vibes, and I'd agree. And usually, nice guy vibes come with a little bit of creep uh, on the side. So, um, that's, yeah, that's why I, I project I, asshole vibes. <laughs> I don't think we have uh, much more details. There is a trailer for it. It's coming out in September, which seems like a decent uh, launch window. Like I know the Maybe. series is popular, but like it's kind of avoiding that really heavy. October November period. I mean, it's so it's it's so it, it is popular, but it, it, correct me if I'm wrong. It's it's also rather niche, isn't it? Like like it's not. I don't actually know. Like how many? I don't know. I mean, does this sell millions of copies? I am not clear. It, it's in a genre that isn't as big as other. You know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. aside from like the first Walking Dead, like yeah. I, and again, I I could be I could be totally wrong. Like how well do like these kinds of games sell? The Telltale games did not sell well, which is why they went no, under. They like, I know yeah, right. well, yeah. Tales from the Borderlands, which was one of their best, like just sold abysmal. It was like a few same hundred thousand with copies Wolf Among it. Us. Yeah, which same sucked. with Wolf Among Us. Like <laughs> Tales of the Borderlands has some of the best humor and writing in the medium. Mm -hmm. Like that, that was just phenomenal. And those are gen it's generally not my generally not my kind of game, but I loved Tales from the Borderlands. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean these aren't these aren't like uh, you know 
these aren't the kind of games that are going to sell 10 million copies. So I honestly don't know. But September seems like an, uh, I mean, without knowing what else is coming out, that seems like a decent um, window for it to launch in and, and do pretty well. And uh, I don't know. I, I don't have anything else to say about The Last Life is Strange. I'm surprised, um, you know, and we, we joke about, oh, port everything to Switch, but I, I get the new one not being on Switch, but I'm surprised that mm-hmm. the the remasters of the older games aren't coming to Switch because the, a handheld device seems like a perfect delivery system for these games. Well, I mean, right now, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if it eventually does come to Switch because, like, but right now, again, you can only buy them in the bundle with um, True Colors. So, okay. like... Maybe when they get their standalone releases, they'll add Switch or something. Yeah, that makes sense. I, uh, I don't I don't have anything else on Life is Strange. That's literally all I know about it. I think that's all we have for the Square Enix event. What else do we have, Jeff? There's seven minutes. There is seven minutes. Um, seven minutes, Jeff. What do we got? Got nothing, man. We could, <laughs> just, we could, just, we could just end it. We could end it, but I don't really want to. I don't know. Does surely s- everyone on this podcast has opinions and takes? Surely someone has something they want to talk about. Is there anything? I'd love to talk about Final Fantasy VI. Okay, uh, really no Final Fantasy playing. talk. I've uh, been watching. I've been watching Forged in Fire after work. Now that it's now that there's some of it on Netflix, which what has is been that? fun. Okay, so it's a competition show on the History Channel where a bunch of nerds make knives and then they smack <laughs> them against things to see if if they work or not. It's great. Oh no! Oh no! That sounds awesome. Uh, yeah, no, it's it's Dude. good. It's like I I don't know. It's I, like for some reason, it's like the perfect like I don't feel like doing anything. I it because I, I work nights, so I don't get home till like. 11 30 12 30 and it's like i just want to have a little something to eat and just put something on tv and i was like let's just watch some history nerds make some knives <laughs> and it's it's been very fun similar vibes there's a show on netflix called blown away and it's like it's about glass blowing it's like a competition show and it's these people and all they do is blow glass and i did not even know this was a thing but i should have known because like i don't know how else like vases get made or whatever but it is hardcore. They're like working in these like two thousand yeah, no. degree ovens and like Dude, it's it's like the same thing with Forged and Fire. Yeah. Uh, except, it's crazy. Except everybody looks like except everybody looks like a Civil War reenactor. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> these, these people look a watch, little uh, bit more uh, normal. Watch, <laughs> like <laughs> I'd maybe have a beer with them. Um but, Yeah, no, that that I, I, is I got, now uh, blown away is now massive in my recommendations because I was watching Forged and Fire. It's a very cool show. I it's it's crazy how talented they are and like just like it's amazing how often they'll just like work on something for half the episode and then it's glass so they just drop it and it just shatters in many places they're like well <laughs> guess um, that's that it, it, it's really great when they bored do and just watch the... all right go ahead justin it's it's great when they do the testing and then the knife just breaks in half like like because it plays like the dramatic music and they like amplify the sound of it like hitting the like cement of the forge and then it cuts to the judges just being like oh no oh john i know what you're doing but i am not you got there, buddy. he's giving us peace and quiet just don't don't, <laughs> don't question it you guys um, ever watch like videos of like gorillas fighting each other for, like fun oh hell like, yeah <laughs> all right, right well right so my... <laughs> <laughs> If no one has anything else, and uh, so so wait, the gorilla the gorillas fighting. Thing oh, we are going to talk about me. the gorillas. Okay. Okay. Yeah. No, Dude, there is awesome. a giant mural of a gorilla lifting dumbbells in the gym I've been going to, and I I've named him the Gaines Gorilla, and and he blesses all of my workouts, I'm and sorry. I love him. Christine I'm sorry. Told me, Christine told, I'm sorry. Christine told me she'd buy me a gorilla if I lost weight, so I have to the put that Gaines out there the gorilla. Like, the Gaines yeah. gorilla. The Gaines gorilla. John tuned in as soon as you said the word Gaines. <laughs> that reminds me. John, can you fight a gorilla? That reminds me <laughs> when I was in the Marine Corps, we had this our battalion commander when I was with fought a gorilla. <laughs> oh yeah. Um, Kong sure. versus it's not even a question. commander. Um, <laughs> yeah. Kong versus John. Whatever. Yes. Girl is not gonna fuck. 
gorilla's not gonna <laughs> fuck with me. Um, but but our, our battalion commander. SDTC no, out of gorilla context. Gonna gorilla's me. not gonna fuck with me. Gorilla's not gonna fuck with me. I mean, let's be honest. John, I'm actually picturing John like walking up to a gorilla. Like you want to fuck with me? Like, agitated because of the bright color of his beanie. And, like, I just slap it across the face. What the fuck's up with you? What the fuck are you looking at? Banana eat my um, but uh, but no, <laughs> no. We had this guy. We had this. Our battalion commander when I was in three eight in Iraq. Um, he this motherfucker. He was like super jacked, right? Like I was a big guy. He was he dwarfed me. Like this guy was fucking enormous. And he was working out. The, and every time he was one of those guys in the gym when he would curl, he would like he'd be doing arm curls, but he would make the most exaggerated noises you've ever heard like like unnecessary right because like if i'm doing curls i'm like you know like you know like you're expending energy you know you know you're making some noise you know you're breathing but this motherfucker would go like oh. <laughs> oh. so it's like, like john it's like watching john. it's like watching tennis on tv then and john was, did he fight a gorilla though no he didn't um well only, then what's the point of this story but, but because so so he was doing curls one day he was doing curls one day and he grabs a barbell and he's no doing oh oh and on his last one he's pulling it up and he screams at the top of his lungs he goes this is the mission and i started laughing so fucking hard that i dropped the 45 pound dumbbell i was holding on my foot and i i was walking around i was walking around in a rock for two weeks with a sling oh my god <laughs> You know, John, that story is funny. I'll excuse the fact that it didn't Look, involve gorillas. somebody said gains, and I decided to tell a gym story, okay? Okay, you knew what the point no, of that discussion was. No, I don't. Was, you said gains. Everyone was, was waiting for it you to get gorilla. to the gorilla, and it didn't happen. All right. Oh, <laughs> John, there, was one time, there was one time I fought a gorilla. Okay. Oh, good. 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 <laughs> all right. All right. All right. Let's go. Actually, let's go. Let's go. Let's file fans. No, no. It was an actual, <laughs> was an actual real life gorilla. All right. Specifically, a man in a gorilla suit. Okay. No, no, no but this, this was in Times no. Square, wasn't it? No, hey, yo, no. And, 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 the sh and the show. No, the show. a man in a gorilla suit counts. I, po I, I pose to the chat. I, has anybody else oh. here fought a man in a gorilla suit before? About the same. No, but he looks like a fucking gorilla, so. right? If he's making gorilla noises, oh. it's close enough. All it's right. gorilla enough for me. Why can't it be gorilla enough for you? We will no we will put this out to the jury and we'll have a an answer for this. Put on, on Twitter. The show. Put on the official. Yeah, Twitter. put on Twitter. Put on Twitter. Fuck it. Yeah, put on Twitter. I'm confident. Guys, confident. guys, I, remind me tomorrow. I will bring you a picture of the Gaines Gorilla. Hell yeah! Okay. I want to see the Gaines Gorilla. Please stay tuned for Gaines me. Gorilla. We are out of time. Thank God. Thank you, everyone who stuck around for <laughs> I this. Wanna, I just want to point out. Arc. Jeff said. Jeff said Gaines Gorilla, not Games Gorilla. That's a whole different kind of gorilla. Is it Gaines? Gaines yeah, gorilla? no, that's a different gorilla. Games yeah. gorilla? Those aren't playing games. Games. You said game. I, games. Games gorilla. I, I want to make it clear. You did not say games. Gamer gorilla. gorilla. Gamer no. gorilla. We're not talking <laughs> about gamer gorilla. No, there gamer gorilla is a different games. gorilla. Stop fucking messing around gorillas. <laughs> that's that's a please, totally different kind of gorilla. Please let us end this show. Um, John, do you want we do we have a guest next week? Is that locked in? Can we talk about that? We yes, we do. So we got some really cool guests coming up uh, the pad the next few weeks. We're going to be focusing on women content creators, uh, uh, helping lift them up, uh, helping uh, you know advocate for them. Um, uh, next week, uh, she was supposed to be on tonight, but uh, Pika Chilita from Twitter, uh, uh, Katie, very good friend of mine. Um, she was supposed to be on tonight, but her router busted, so she's going to be on next or or she's going to be on April first. My bad. Two weeks next from week, now. Two weeks from now. Next week, we have uh, uh, Bloody Faster TV, uh, who is a very successful streamer in her own right. Um, she does a lot of good stuff. She, she does a lot of charity work. Um, she is absolutely fantastic. She's going to be on next week. Um, she's, she's a delight. I cannot wait to have her on. Um, and uh, and we're, 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 we'll, we'll, we've got some more uh, very talented women uh, lined up as guests uh, in the near future as well. Uh, so please, as Square Enix would say, please look forward to that in the future. Awesome. They say that a lot. <laughs> All right. Well, if no one has anything else, uh, kindness costs nothing. 
And please don't fight gorillas because animal cruelty is not a joke. And they are honestly just innocent, wonderful creatures. Until they beat the shit out of you. That will likely not happen if you just leave them the fuck. Probably a good reason. Probably. Good. Probably good, good, good night, Probably everyone. Good, good night. Have a great night. Take care of each other. Till next time. Final Final Fantasy VI.